Okay, AS Maths, June 2022, end of your exam. This is the Mechanics and Stats 1 question. Um, probably ought to show you all the questions because it's vast. Um, so please have a read. But basically, we've got a ball of mass and then pause, do the question and then come back. So first thing I do is I'll draw on all my forces. Okay, so I have a ball is attached to the end of one string on this side. So this is the mass times gravity to give me my weight, mass times gravity to give me my weight, and weight is a force, force is Newtons, that's the first bit done. Goes over a fixed pulley, it doesn't say whether it's smooth, which is interesting, and the system is held at rest with the balls hanging freely and the screen is taut, which means it's not going to suddenly make a movement and it's all ready to go. The hanging parts of the string are vertical with a height 2H and a H, interesting, the system, blah blah blah. Um, let's move it up a bit. In subsequent motion, Q does not rebound when it hits the ground, which is good, which means it doesn't jolt or anything. And P does not hit the pulley, which means it doesn't stop the other thing from moving. The balls are modelled as particles. Uh, the string is modelled as light and inextensible. The pulley is uh, modelled as being small and smooth. Good, so I was worried about that. Air resistance is, uh, is modelled as being negligible. Right. Starting, write an equation, lovely. So let's get the rest of these forces in. So this is tension and this is tension. Tension is the same because we have a light, inextensible string going over a smooth pulley. We don't bother with the two forces of tension coming down from the pulley. If we wanted to know what they were, we would add two of our tensions. Okay, M, 5M has got to be bigger. So this one is going down with certain acceleration and this one is going up with the same acceleration because we have a light and extensible string. There is the same acceleration on both uh, P and Q. Okay, so make sure you get this right. Don't muck up which way around you're doing it. Now it wants the model P, which feels wrong, I have to say. So I'm going to write 4P. P is going up. So going up is T, a force, F equals MA, and the force downwards is its weight, and that equals its mass, which is 2M, times the acceleration, which we don't know. That's it for one, two marks by the looks of things. For Q, we're going downwards, so if the weight is going downwards, same in positive. In the opposite direction is tension, so that's got to be negative. And that equals its mass, which is 5m times the same acceleration. So that's for Q. That's question four. Done. But I'm a nightmare for this, so I just kind of carry on. Now, it's asking something about terms in H. So I think I'm bound to need the acceleration or something. So I'm just going to carry on, as I would normally, which involves adding these two together like simultaneous equations. I will write it out, but... To be honest, there's no need. It's just easier to just forget that. So I've got T. If I'm adding them together, T minus 2MG plus 5MG minus T equals 2MA plus 5MA. That's a line I wouldn't bother with, just so you know. So we've got a plus T and a minus T, so they cancel. And then we've got 5MG minus 2MG, which gives me 3 mg and I've got 2ma plus 5ma which gives me 7ma. Now I can see that I've got m in both. We know the mass is not zero so I'm going to cancel that. I can divide through by m which leaves me 3g over 7 equals the acceleration and I will then write that in here. 3 7 g or 3g over 7 and that is my meters per second squared for acceleration. Okay, brilliant. So I've done question four and it turns out, oh no, I've done question A and it turns out that's the first bit I need to do for the seven marker. So good to know. So now I'm reading the seven marker. Find in terms of H only the height above the ground which P comes to instantaneous rest. Right, this is the classic one that people hate. So what we've got is this is 2H above the ground. We're interested just in P. So when it's all left to rest, Q is going to move down H, which means P is going to move up H. When we get to this point, this, so when Q hits the ground, 
it will be travelling at a specific velocity. It will hit the ground, then stop. But the velocity with which it hits the ground will be the same velocity that P is travelling at at this point. So therefore, at this point, P will be travelling with a specific velocity, its initial velocity, which will be the same as Q's final velocity. It will carry on going up, but there will be no acceleration forced upon it because Q has landed and not moving. So this acceleration will change. The only acceleration acting on it will be gravity coming downwards. So not in the same direction, it's gravity, which will slow it up. Now I've made it look like a large movement. And if you actually think about it, it's just a little move. It will just be a little movement because it's going up with no force to go up. It's being slowed down by gravity. That's it. It's not going to go very far before it turns around and comes back down again. So we need to find out what the final velocity was for Q because that is the initial velocity and we're already 3h up. We need to know how much, what fraction of h we're going to go up there and then add all of them together. So let's give it a shot. So looking at suit for Q. Okay, let's do see that. Okay, so it's travelling h downwards. Okay, did that say Q? Um, and we're going to have downwards as positive. Okay. So its initial velocity is zero because they've told us it starts at rest. The final velocity is what we want to find. And the acceleration we know was 3g over 7. We're not interested in the time. Where's my time in the books gone? So the one with that t is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Okay, v squared equals 0 squared plus 2 times 3g over 7 times h. So v is 6g over 7 h all square rooted. Because it's just this square rooted. That is my final velocity for q, which means it must be for p, that is going to be my initial velocity. So that. so that is going to be the square root of 6gh over 7. We're interested in the distance because it's that last bit it's travelling up at. We know that once it reaches the top, its final velocity will be 0. And we know now that it's... So if up is positive, then gravity is minus 9.8. We're not interested in time, so it's exactly the same formula v squared equals u squared plus 2as, v is 0, u squared then is just 6gh over 7 plus 2 times minus 9.8 times s. Can't fit it in. Okay. Taking away this from both sides gives me minus 6 over 7gh equals, oh I can make that g, let me put that as g, equals 2g S. The G's are going to cancel. Divide by 2. I've got minus 6 over 14 H equals. Why have I got a minus? Oh, that was a minus over there. So yeah, that had been a minus, so now it's plus. Equals S. Right then. And that is the same as 3 over 7 h obviously okay so that is the tiny distance that this is traveling so there's two h there's h and it will go to three sevenths so not very far at all so then to get the total height uh, the height above the ground when it first comes in when p first comes instantaneously to rest so when it's so when v is at the top will be two h plus the next h from this going down, plus 3 sevenths h, which gives us 3 and 3 sevenths h, which is 21, 24 and sevenths h. And that's the answer for number 7. One limitation of the model, well, in actual fact, our h, because our g's cancelled, I'm not sure I would be saying that. And then it's a time to look at this now. We model a particles from the middle. So 
we can see, and they're trying to be clear, one limitation of the modelling the balls as particles. So modelling the balls of particles is the weight is in the very centre. So they're measuring the height to the centre of the ball, and depending on what the particle the ball is, it's not going to do that. So the answer to this question is that the distance that Q falls to the ground will not be exactly H. But then you could say that for this one as well, obviously, because this is 2H. But there's obviously some error going on there. So that will be the issue. And then it says, in reality, the string is not extens inextensible. State how this would affect the acceleration of the particles. Now, normally I would have said inextensible means acceleration is the same. But what they want you to say is that basically it's not it's the acceleration of the board would not be equal. You want to say that each of them, P and Q, would have different acceleration or have a different magnitude of acceleration if it was in if it was not inextensible. Okay. So it means because it would bounce, it would stretch, um, and so they would have different accelerations. So the whole of this SUVAT thing would be stuffed. Okay, that's it. Well done.